I wanted to introduce Mary, everybody knows her, but when I first met Mary, she was rowing um, upstream hard. <laughs> she made it look, you know, kind of hard. She had a few things against her, as we all do at certain times of our life. And she was efforting, as you know, and she was a perfect picture of me because I was efforting. I was efforting at that time as well. She was efforting in a different way. And she found her way to A Course of Miracles. When she found out about um, the, the, we had calls during the day, like, she showed up to that. She showed up to A Course of Miracles as soon as she found out about it. Then she found out that we were doing daily calls and she showed up to that. If she is a teacher of anything, she is a teacher of showing up. Like, she, this woman shows up. And she shows up to her spiritual practice like no one I've ever met in my entire life. I would go to Trader Joe's where she worked, you know, just to make casual contact and buy some milk. And she would like be pulling her lesson out and be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, okay, like keep it cool, man. <laughs> she was never afraid to ask questions. And she was always, always the first to celebrate something or someone. And if somebody ever missed a class, like she was on it with the notes, calling them up, did you, did you get this? Like she made it seem so much more important than I would ever make it seem. I'd be like, don't worry, if they missed it, it doesn't matter. And she'd be like, no, we gotta make sure that everybody gets this stuff. And around the same time, she took the affirmative prayer class, because I was giving it, and she signed up for everything first. You know, she was like the first student there. And so she took the affirmative prayer class, and she soaked it up like, you know, a dry sponge, and she started applying it. And she said, I'm gonna use this to get my next home. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit how, where I'm supposed to live, where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do, what I'm supposed to say. Like she embodied that, or attempted to do to the best of her ability. And she manifested her next home within 30 days. And it, and it checked off all the things on her list. And it wasn't like she was using the law of attraction, but she was like using the idea that she didn't have to effort anymore. I mean, what a beautiful and holy thing for all of us to recognize the lack of efforting that is required when we begin to move into the plan of God. God has no investment in our stress or struggle or fear. So she began and continued to use it. She signed up for, if you, you know, what I noticed that like some people who were new to the prayer recipe of affirmative prayer, that improv would help them because in improv there's no wrong answers. And so I said, let's do an adult improv class. And she was the first to sign up for that as well. She took affirmative class, the affirmative prayer again and again and again. She took the writer's group. She began sharing her stories at Voice Box. It was just so beautiful to see her bloom as a storyteller and as a creative. And then she took a course in creating four times. <laughs> Like she, for me, I am really going to miss her because she's been such a cheerleader for everything that I put out there. She's been like, this is important. We have to let people know about this, you know? Little by little, I began to witness her relinquish the rowing upstream and began going with the flow and began rowing in love. And now she is rowing merrily, 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 <laughs> gently down the stream. And her talk is called Being Mary. And so please give her a warm hand. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you, Maureen. Thanks so everybody for being here. Um, I just have a few things I'd like to share with you. Um, in sixth grade. <laughs> by my body that I would wear full three, three full length slips, especially around my chest. Just embarrassed about myself. But there was Carol Gross. She was so cool. She had older siblings, so she had a wisdom and a confidence that I so admired. She was popular, she was well liked, and I would imitate her brand of cool by writing her name over and over exactly like she wrote it. I copied her dressing, I copied her hand, gesture, everything. She also had felt tip markers, there were flares, I don't know if you remember those flares to be exact. I couldn't afford a 49 cent flare. So I went to the nearby stationery store and I stole every flare. <laughs> So that 
night I probably sat in the middle of the living room writing with my new borrowed markers. <laughs> And my dad spotted, spotted them and asked, where did you get those? I said, well, I, I, I borrowed them from Carol Gross. And he said, I want her number. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and I said, well, she's at swim team practice. You can't talk to her. <laughs> and he said, what time does she get done? And I said, 9.30. He goes, I'll call her then. So I swam in guilt for the next four hours, trying to figure out how can I not tell my dad a lie anymore, and how can I get him to not call the coolest girl in the school? <laughs> oh, I would have been so embarrassed. By 9.15, I was out of all, all answers, and I went to my dad, fell in his lap, and wrapped my arms around his neck, and, and just cried my eyes out. I told him that I stole the markers, and he took me to Mr. Funt to bring the markers back. Um, I remember Mr. Funt in the, in the basement of the stationery store said, your dad is wise and he's teaching you a lesson. He's teaching you integrity. But the next week, I went back to stealing along with... <laughs> everything you need by forgiving everyone in your past. 
one of them asked, what's your perfect day? Ask for your perfect day. All you need to do is ask. There was also this sweet, young, long-haired blonde with horse riding pants who referred a lot to her young son and spoke thoughtfully and yet with an easy laugh. Her name was Melody Suss. And there was also a calm, yet energetic, slightly talkative woman who handed out the books. <laughs> Lightheartedly, she explained the lesson and listened intently when each of us spoke. And that is Maureen. After that, starting on the first of that following year, I timidly got on the calls for the daily dose of learning about these lessons. I remember being amazed at the dedication of these students when I heard they were getting on the call on New Year's Day morning at 6.45 a.m. <laughs> My heart skipped a beat with excitement. These guys are serious. <laughs> this is a rare find. I leaned in, wanting to get to know them better. After my first year and a half, I found that I was no longer in pain and emotional suffering. I was working through the forgiveness, as they taught, with my mother for her dirty, rotten ways. <laughs> <laughs> On Maureen's birthday, I sang to her, I haven't got time for the pain, by Carly Simon as a tribute to a teacher who brought me out of pain by talking us through these lessons. Then I worked through my forgiveness with my father and his dirty rotten ways. <laughs> and then I worked through my nine bosses and their dirty rotten ways. Who <laughs> told me my job was in jeopardy. So I really needed to work this. And then I was told, awareness is the first step. <coughs> I stayed with it, each year signing up again without question. I was learning so much and releasing so much guilt and shame and hurt and starting to feel the love more and more. And I learned not only were these people from my past innocent, but I was innocent, me, the flare marker thief. <laughs> Then when Maureen unveiled a course in creating, I couldn't imagine not joining that too. I watched my classmates literally lifting and launching their dreams. They were stepping into lives that were once just dreams. And in my fourth round of taking the class, <laughs> and watching on the sidelines other people attaining what they had set out to do, I began to feel worthy of utilizing more of the tools from this group, from this class, from this course. Like the one-on-ones with Maureen, where you get to come to her and tell her about your personal issue of the day, and she speaks to you privately about how to handle that problem. I committed to a daily meditation, and then right after that, I would uh, write something called the Dear Divine Letter which is basically a conversation with God using the three questions that were, that were sung this morning in our meditation. The truth is, I, I really have done that meditation daily since about April. Just daily, every day. 20 minute meditation, then the, then the, uh, then the, then the Dear Divine Letter, and that has been groundbreaking. It, it has been a foundation for anything that I've been able to create right since. I also made sure I served up something called soul food every day. These are terminologies from the class. But basically it was I was filling my well. I was giving myself what I so desperately and personally needed and wanted. Not what other people found were, were important to them, but what I needed uh, to make myself feel good each day. I connected more with my classmates and I could more honestly connect with those closest to me. I listened for God's vision for me and I began to share it with others. These others that I speak of would become my midwives and my wingmen. 
you are all right here in this room today. And I learned that I could do, that I could be and do with ease and peace. And that I didn't have to do it alone. God is always there, and my community is always there, and you were always there. I could be right here with you, experiencing my innocence and looking at your innocence. I no longer need to steal flares in order to be like someone else when there is a flare of light so bright within me that guides my way. I have my own inner flare today, and it shines innocence and gratitude and reminds me that I am love. Thank you. And thank you for holding me in your prayer and goodwill. And thank you to those of you who came out on Friday the 13th for the full moon gathering. And those of you who thought about coming out and all of you who generously gave to the Moving to California Fund. I really do appreciate you and your love. Our story isn't all 